Okay, so today we're going to be talking about SN1 and SN2 reactions. So let's talk about them. So the S in SN1 is substitution. Let's see if I can't get a better camera angle here. So substitution and substitution reactions have a leaving group and it gets swapped out for a nucleophile. A nucleophile is something that has excess of electrons and wants to find a nucleus to give its electrons to. Okay, and then the other thing we're tar talking about is elimination reactions. So elimination reactions start out with a leaving group and then based on an interaction with a nucleophile, both of these are based on an interaction with a nucleophile, this leaving group and a hydrogen from either here or here, we'll talk later about which one and why, give you a double bond. It eliminates the leaving group. It, this substitutes the leaving group, this eliminates the leaving group. Now there's two ways you can achieve each of these. So let's start with substitution. There's a one-step reaction where you can do a substitution. And that is where you have a nucleophile. I drew that crazily. Here we go. Okay. You have a leaving group. This is also known as the electrophile because it's what the nucleophile is attacking or the substrate. Um, but this one part right here is the leaving group. And you need a leaving group on your electrophile or substrate to get an SN2 reaction. And you have a nucleophile, and the nucleophile will come in and attack to form a new bond with that lone pair, and the leaving group will leave. And that will happen all at once. There's a transition state in the middle as the nucleophile is forming a bond and as the leaving group is leaving. This is called a transition state. It's often denoted like this. So the product from the, this reaction is a nucleophile has joined and the leaving group has left. So you get the leaving group off to the side. So because this all happens in one step, the rate law depends on both the thing with the leaving group in it. So you can call it the substrate or the electrophile. I'm going to just put LG because it's the thing that the leaving group is on and the nucleophile. So if you double one of these or both of these, they're going to, if you double one, the overall rate will double. If you double two, the overall rate will quadruple. And the other thing, so because this one-step reaction has two things in the rate, it's known as an SN2. So the N is for the nucleophile, and the two is because there's two things in the rate law. It's weird because an SN2 is one step. That two isn't about how many steps, it's about how many things are in the rate law. The other thing it does, you'll notice that I drew this like nucleophile up here instead of where the leaving group used to be. That's because in an SN2 reaction, there's an inversion of stereochemistry. So the nucleophile attacks because the leaving group is still there. It attacks where the leaving group isn't. So if this was a wedge, it become then the nucleophile will be a dash. If the leaving group was a wedge, nucleophile will be a dash. If the nucleophile was a wedge, but if the leaving group was a dash, then the nucleophile would be a wedge. So it just switches out. So that's pretty much everything as a quick overview of an SN2 reaction. Now let's do an overview of an SN1 reaction. So this is a substitution also, and it's actually two steps confusing because this is an SN1, but it's the same thing as last time where it's based on the rate law, not on the number of steps. So in this, the first step, the leaving group leaves and that forms a carbocation. Have to be careful of rearrangement in these kinds of reactions because carbocations will rearrange. We'll talk about that more in later chapters. And then a nucleophile will come in and attack here. and you'll get your final product. So uh, the rate law, and for rate law, you just have a constant K that's always in the rate law. I honestly can't even remember off the top of my head what it's there for, but it's a constant. So the rate is the constant times, in this case, only the leaving group, or the substrate, the electrophile, the thing with the leaving group on it. Because 
This is really hard to do. Carbocations are not really stable. This isn't something that like they're dying to become a carbocation. So for the leaving group to leave and a carbocation to form is not intuitive. This is not going to be easy for the for the leaving group to leave and a carbocation to form. So that is a slow step. And then once you have a carbocation, it's reactive. It's not very stable. So it's going to react as fast as it can with the nucleophile. So that is the rate of a SN2 reaction. Because this carbocation is formed, that means there's only three electron domains. This goes all the way back to Vesper theory. So they're actually planar with 120 degrees between each angle. So that means your nucleophile can attack from either side. It could be a wedge or a dash. So it gives you a racemic mixture. So for SN2, you get an inversion of stereochemistry. For SN1, you get a racemic mixture, and there's a possibility of rearrangement. So the other type is the elimination reaction. So elimination reactions will form a double bond. They're eliminating something, and there's two types of elimination reactions. So one will happen all in one step, And the other will happen in two steps. Sorry, I was uh, checking my notes to make sure I didn't miss anything for SN1. Okay. So for the elimination reaction, you actually need a hydrogen on the adjacent carbon. It could be this hydrogen or the hydrogen on this carbon. We'll talk about that and which one it'll pick later on. So your nucleophile will come and take that hydrogen. The electrons from this bond will move here and then your leaving group will leave. And you'll end up with a double bond. That happens like this all at once. I drew one thing at a time, but it's happening very quickly. It's a one-step reaction. And we'll talk about you'll need anti-periplanar or Hoffman versus site seven, all those rules. Those don't come into play, I don't think, until chapter seven. Um, so for right now, we're not going to talk about those, but that is something to remember if you're reviewing these for the MCAT or whatever. So um, this is two steps, or this is a one-step reaction. All happens at once, so that's what. It's an E2 because the rate equals the nucleophile and the substrate, the thing with the leaving group on it. So the thing that attacks and the thing that's leaving are both involved. If you have Two of these, it could happen twice as fast. If you have two of these, it could happen twice as fast. If you have two of both, it'll happen four times as fast. So one step, but two things are involved in the rate law. And then with, so this is an E2. With an E1, it's a two-step reaction. And the beginning step is the same of that as an SN1. Oh, sorry, I do that wrong. It's a carbocation. No, it doesn't even matter. You couldn't see it. <laughs> so the first step is same as the SN1 reaction. So I need to make it to where you can see this whole paper. Sorry. Not a good camera angle today. I can never quite get it right consistently. So the E1 has the same first step as the SN1. A carbocation is formed. That's the slow step. That's the rate determining step. Your rate only depends on that. The next step, your base or nucleophile is going to take a hydrogen, either from here or here, and a double bond will be formed to fill in that carbocation, and you'll end up like this. Okay, so these are the basics of the, oh, and you also need to look out for rearrangement anytime there's a carbocation. So these are the basics of an SN1, SN2, E1, E2 reaction. But you might be thinking, well, how can I determine if it's going to be an SN1 or an SN2 or an E1 or an E2? I'll tell you. So I look first at the nucleophile. If the nucleophile is weak, it's going to favor um, a 1, SN1 or E1. If the nucleophile is strong, it's going to favor a 2, SN2 or E2. When I say strong, Generally, that's a good place to start with that is negative. If it's negatively charged, it's going to be strong. 
If it's um, not negatively charged, it's going to be weak, usually. There is a lot more in-depth answer to this question, what's strong or weak in different settings. If you go on your textbook, the Solomon's textbook, I have the 11th edition, but it is page, hang on, let me find it, 265, and then there's more a little bit lower down on page 267 and 268. So check that out if you want something more in-depth. So you're going to be either SN2 or E2 if it's strong, negative, E1 or E, SN2 or E2 if it's strong, negatively charged usually, E1 or SN1 if it's weak. So not negatively charged, usually. That's like where I start if I'm trying to figure it out. Okay, so now if we have a 2, you need to try to figure out what's going to make it go E2 and what's going to make it go SN2, right? Well, I can tell you, if it's primary or secondary, because it needs that backside attack, it's going to favor SN2. Also, if it's a narrow, like a, if it's a thin line versus a big bulky group, it'll favor SN2. If, it, if there's heat, so I'm going to denote that with a triangle, if it's a big bulky group, like a tert butoxide, it's going to go E2. And if it's secondary or tertiary with a strong nucleophile, it's going to go E2. The way I remember this, the like strong favors twos also is that I think of it kind of like a bully. If you have a bully that is really strong or somebody who wants to come in and take whatever they want, maybe like a robber, strong, they can come in and steal whatever they want, kick out whoever they want, and they'll take that place. So that's what happens for a two reaction. But if you have someone who's like weaker, more afraid, wimpy, that's going to rob or beat someone up or whatever, they're going to wait till the other guys leave and then they'll come in and take what they want. So uh, that's why I sort of associate a strong nucleophiles going for the two, a weak nucleophiles going for the one. That's how I help myself remember that if you're like in an exam situation. Now for SN1 versus E1, this one's harder. Because they're a carbocation, they both are actually going to need a secondary or tertiary. Primary carbocations are not really stable. Heat is still going to favor E1, and bulkiness is still going to favor E1. For SN1, really the biggest thing is to primary or tertiary, or if it's narrow. So um, this is it for me. This is the biggest thing I do to check and see if it's going to be one of these. If this doesn't help me check it out, then I'll check polar protic or whatever, but this works for me almost every single time. So this is what I use. So I hope that's helpful to you guys. Just a quick review. Um, I'm going to post a video now of me solving the practice problems from this chapter for Solomon's, which is chapter six.